What a thriller in Milwaukee. Marquette 69, Xavier 68. We are joined by the head coach of the Golden Eagles. He is a National Coach of the Year candidate. It is Shaka Smart, whose team moves to 21-6 and six on the year at 13-3 and three in the Big East. Shaka, let's start with the final sequence of this game. Xavier, punch for punch. They get a bucket by Jack Nungy, and then a sequence which you play it out, and Omax Prosper comes up the hero. Take us through that last sequence to find a way to win this game. Well, Xavier deserves a ton of credit the way that they just continued to answer back, and they, they just wouldn't go away. Uh, but our guys, you know, when they scored, you could kind of see in their eyes there was a determination to, to go attack. So, um, you know, <laughs> Uh, thankfully, I did not call timeout and, and just let them go. You know, it, it was not Cam's night from a scoring standpoint, but, you know, he gives us such an offensive confidence when he's in the game. And, you know, he, he set up that play because he was able to get deep in the paint, get it up on the rim. And then I'm so proud and happy for Omax because um, it wasn't his best game. There were some plays that didn't go his way, but he just stayed connected with his teammates, he continued to attack. And then there he is making the game winning basket. Coach, uh, Coach Smart, congrats on the win, man. I know how hard it is to win a game. And uh, obviously I've seen you guys practice, watched you guys a ton. So love your team. And, and just as a connectivity, when uh, being in the building with you guys at shoot around practice and watching you guys play. Talk about the decision, because many people, you know, when you're in that seat, you, I've been there, you're in there, not to call timeout in, in that moment. What goes through your mind uh, when you have that ball, you have that possession, and you have a timeout, and you know you you could use it? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. You know, how did you play that out in your mind tonight? I felt like we probably have a better crack at it if they weren't necessarily set. Um, you know, been in that situation – before and you know it's worked out well both ways it's not worked out well both ways so you never know for sure uh it's easy for us in this day and age to uh participate in what's called resulting which is taking the result and saying that meant the process was good or bad uh, but our guys just went and made a good play uh, but i i felt confident that you know the ball was in cam's hands he could go and attack um and we could make something good happen Shaka, when we talked back in January, one of the things that you thought about and talked about was the fact that you wanted to get better and better as the year goes on to reverse that script from year one at Marquette. So can you take us a little bit through the last week? Because you had said that maybe you'll revisit some of the things that you talked about with your team at a fall retreat before the season. You fall to UConn since you've been able to respond. You've responded with two wins, a great one tonight. Uh, have you revisited any of those points with your team about this home stretch? We revisit it every day, John. I mean, we talk about that stuff every day. And, you know, by the way, I thought our guys really got better over the course of last year. We just – we were not playing our best basketball, I would say, in late February and, and during the month of March. And – um, you know, it's a grind when you get in this league and there's probably some fatigue that sets in at times. And, you know, there's a lot of things that can 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 get in the way. You just got to stay connected. I think the biggest thing we've talked about from day one with this team, and you mentioned our retreat, is relationships and pouring into each other and staying connected regardless of circumstances. And this group has done a great job of that. They've supported each other. They've been positive dominoes for each other. And a game like tonight, we did not have a good shooting game. Uh, we had some defensive mishaps that Xavier did a great job taking advantage of. We were down for the majority of the game, but our connectivity and our guys' belief in each other won us the game. Yeah, I was going to ask that coach from a, you know, they shoot 53% from the field. Right. And it's the best, the two best offenses in the Big East going at it and, and playing beautiful basketball. But, and you guys shoot 38% in the, from the field, but you end up with the victory. Um, 
you know, that's that's impressive, in my opinion. I thought, you, you know, turning them over kept you in it. You know, the press was good. Help 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 our uh, listeners and, and viewers understand just mentality-wise, like you look up now for a team, you guys were picked ninth. I know you, coaches, you talk to your team, you don't pay attention to the preseason prediction. The only thing that matters is, is what you think of yourselves in the locker room, right? But you're a game and a half ahead of everyone else for a Big East championship, keeping your team present, folk, how do you go about that? The next couple of weeks, obviously a huge game tonight. Xavier was right there yeah. with you. But that can be a distraction as much as it can keep you motivated. Yeah, I, th I thought actually was a factor tonight. Um, not, not Certainly not overlooking Xavier, but just a lot of talk, you know, around our guys about – the magnitude of the game and the potential opportunity, you know, in the Big East standings. And I'll be honest, I mean, I thought Xavier had a more aggressive, uh, more, you know, kind of going after it, nothing to lose mentality than we did early. I thought they played with that. I thought we had some avoidance. You know, part of it was being at home. Hey, we don't want to mess this up. You know, we don't want to lose this opportunity. And you can't be your best that way. You know, you you have to be able to say, okay, there's some nerves there. That's fine. But I'm going to pour into my teammates and I'm going to go after the game plan with reckless abandon. And I thought as the game went on, our guys settled in. We did a better job of that. But it still wasn't our night from a shooting standpoint. So when you shoot 22%, 23% from three, and it's hard to beat a top 20 team, our saving grace on the offensive end was going to get 15 offensive rebounds. Shock, I have to ask you, Matt Norlander, CBSSports.com, puts out a story today, and Entity talks about your team and the off-season cycle of college basketball in a world where transfers are hitting everywhere, and frankly, NIL is real. It's a real part of the climate. How sweet is it for you to be leading a program that's really done it with authenticity, player development, guys that are getting better, not some splash for a dollar number that came in over the offseason. Well, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it, John. Um, and, and far be it for me to, to be critical of what anyone else does. Um, I mean, if you can add a big-time player like a Bryce Hopkins – or a Sule boom, uh, I think any coach in the country would would, 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 would take those guys and add those guys. Um, right, Lavelle? Uh, but I just felt <laughs> like last year, you know, we were waiting to find out what Justin Lewis wanted to do. And we had to wait all the way until the deadline, June 1st. As you know, most of the transfer stuff gets figured out in April or maybe early May. And so we're waiting on Justin and, you know, I'm looking at our other returning players, particularly the six guys that have been in our rotation last year. Oso, Tyler, Omax, Stevie, Jop, and Cam. And I'm just saying, these guys are better than people think and they work their tails off. So let's just invest in them like crazy and help them invest in each other. Let's see how good we can be with those guys, plus the guys we signed. If Justin comes back, great. If he doesn't come back, okay. Um, you know, we we took Zach Reitzel, and we were excited about him because of his character and his winning background as a national champion. And then he has the knee issue he's had, really wasn't able to play much at all. So we knew we were going to be young. But the thing, and, and Laval know this, knows this, is there's a big difference between – being a freshman or sophomore in November and being a freshman, especially a sophomore, especially a guy like Stevie Mitchell, Cam Jones, David Joplin, there's a threshold you cross where I'm not saying those guys are upperclassmen, but they're closer to that than where they were last year. And they've played 58, 59 games, whatever it is. Uh, they have those experience in, the, in their pocket. Um, and I'll tell you one thing I will never do, ever, and promise you this. Um, and again, coaches 
quote unquote, don't control this, but uh, you know, around the country, coaches' heads are not in the sand. I'll never prioritize a guy that's never worn our jersey over a guy that has. And that's just me. That's just me personally. Now, again, I think Bryce Hopkins is the most talented player in our league. Like, that guy is so good. Um, so I'm not saying transfers aren't any good. And, again, any coach in the country would take a guy like him, a guy like Boom, a guy like, uh, you know, some of the people that get brought into different places. But we just chose for several reasons to do it our way. And your way has come to the tune of 21-6 and six overall and 13-3 and three in the Big East. Shaka, that's two games with Xavier. They've been decided by a combined five points. So I'm not sure what the prescription is, but – Watching this is a lot of fun. Yeah, I I, t I can't tell you how, enough how much credit Xavier deserves. And the tough thing about these games for us as coaches and, and for the players is after the game, it's, it's a W or an L, but it's like, it's kind of like when we went to Providence and lost in double overtime, it's like, man, yeah, guys did a lot of really, mm -hmm. really good things. But you know what? We, we weren't able to finish it and um i man xavier being shorthanded tonight uh, their guys showed incredible fortitude and toughness and character and man uh they got a heck of a team hey shot quick 20 seconds got the long-haired shaka i've seen the ball all the way down shaka the mid-haired shock <laughs> which does maya which does maya prefer what hairstyle does she like? Uh, well, she's the reason that I got hair at all because, you know, <laughs> I was like everybody else, Laval, during the, you know, initial COVID quarantine when we were all in our homes. You know, I didn't cut my hair. I didn't shave, you know, like everybody else. And every time I did a Zoom, I had a hat on. And so when it came time to, we started our practice season and we're getting close to games and we're doing some media stuff. I go to, I get my clippers. I go to cut my hair. I literally was about to cut it. And Maya said, nah, why don't you just leave it and just kind of see how it goes. And so we, you know, we ended up, I ended up not cutting it. Um, I never have gone to the barber my whole adult life ever. Always cut my own hair. But I bet, you know, I go to the barber here every once in a while, probably not as much as some people think I should. But you know what? The guys like to make fun of me about it. Whatever works. <laughs> Dr. Smart, thank you for your time. Congratulations. Thank you, guys.